lowered the Atlantic sea level by 15,000 feet, exposing the peaks of the world's longest mountain chain. Compared to Iceland, these landscapes are massive. The mountain chain here is hundreds of miles wide and at its crest is a huge rift valley. In places, this valley is as deep as the Grand Canyon, but twice as wide. And a long line of volcanoes runs down the center. The answer lies deep in the earth, where hot mantle rock rises slowly to the surface by convection. At places like the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, this forces the plates gradually apart. As it cools, it forms new plate. So this is called a constructive plate boundary. In places, molten magma reaches the surface and forms a volcano. So most of the magma that is brought to the surface in Iceland is what we call basaltic, and it produces mostly basaltic lava flows and basaltic ash and tephra, if you like. And that is the most uh, uh, common magma type on Earth, because that's also the same material that forms the ocean floor. It's also the same material that forms Hawaii. They call this the entrance to hell, because deep underneath this glacier lies a powerful volcano. It's named after an evil troll, Katla. It last went up in 1918, sending giant chunks of ice down to the sea. Those who were there say it was too magnificent for words. In the nearby village of Vik, they are waiting for Katla to blow again. Two years ago, an ash cloud from an Icelandic volcano paralyzed northern Europe. One of the Earth's most intriguing mysteries is the presence of a huge arc of geological destruction surrounding the Pacific. It's known as the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire is one of the most extensive zones of destruction on planet Earth. Its most visible features are the hundreds of volcanoes that line the shores of the Pacific Ocean. They form an arc that extends 25,000 miles from South America, along America's northwest coast to Alaska. And then down through Russia, Japan, and Southeast Asia. All the way to New Zealand. Cataclysmic eruptions have occurred here throughout history. August 1883, Indonesia. The Krakatoa volcano blew itself to pieces, creating the loudest sound in recorded history. June 1991, the Philippines. Mount Pinatubo blasted debris 22 miles into the atmosphere, suffocating ash swamped over 2,500 square miles. 
And in May 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted, causing a billion dollars worth of damage. The ever-present threat from these volcanoes makes it essential that scientists understand the forces that power them. Geologists know that only an enormous process called subduction could shift these mixed ocean sediments here. Subduction occurs when the sea floor moves and slides down under the land. As it descends, the top sedimentary layers are scraped off by the land like a snowplow scoops up snow. The seabed, loaded with water, continues down into the earth. This is how seawater travels deep underground, where it creates the magma plumes that build the Ring of Fire's explosive volcanoes. These phenomenal convection currents force the Pacific Plate into its neighbors, driving the process of subduction. As the plates get dragged by the mantle convection currents, they impede upon other plates. One has to give, so one dives down underneath another, and then the trapped water from its ocean sediment escapes and melts the upper lying mantle, and that creates hot magma that rises to the surface and creates the volcanoes that form around the Ring of Fire. This is the real story of the Ring of Fire. Subduction creates the magma plumes that build the region's explosive volcanoes. The Ring of Fire is a lethal line of volcanoes that includes 75% of all volcanoes on the planet. These fiery peaks encircling the Pacific Ocean are created by tremendous forces deep within the Earth. Eruptions here have taken many thousands of lives and destroyed billions of pounds worth of property. Japan, 1991. After lying dormant for almost 200 years, the volcano Mount Unzen roared into life. Forty-three people died as superheated gases burned their lungs. What happens is that one plate gets forced down or subducted underneath the other. That action produces volcanoes, and subduction volcanoes produce some of the largest and most powerful eruptions on the planet. Subduction volcanoes are the most violent on Earth. You can see just how explosive they are by looking at one of the most famous eruptions ever recorded. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens in the United States was ripped apart. Within minutes, 2.8 billion cubic meters of the volcano were blasted out over the surrounding countryside. For the last 25 years, Mount St. Helens has been fairly quiet. But inside its vast crater, a giant cone of rock is growing. Forced up by the pressure from beneath, Mount St. Helens is building for another eruption. <laughs> 